In this video, I'll be going over object data in Blender and KRK. In Blender, an object is a container that refers to an object data block. This data block usually contains a mesh. It can also store material assignments, shape keys, texture coordinates, vertex colors, and face maps, to name a few. Most of what you know as the object is stored in the object data, while the object itself holds modifiers transformations, and other properties. Blender has a linking system that allows you to change or copy data and object data properties. To illustrate this, I'll show you a couple of examples of how this works and how it can be useful. First, let's create instances and duplicates of a keycap. Alt D to instance X 1905 and a couple more. And then let's duplicate a keycap. 05 on the X. Now an instance shares the original data with the other objects. And with the duplicates, you're creating a new data block derived from the source. We can check this in the Object Data Properties tab on the right. At the top, you'll see a name. The instance is connected to the same data, but the duplicate is not escape.002. Same for this and this. Now with the duplicates you'll see that they all have different names for the data. We can further demonstrate this by editing the mesh or applying a new material. While on the instances Doing this will change all the others. Keyboard Render Kit is based on this premise. All of the keycaps in KRK are duplicates and instances. Let's demonstrate this further on a board. Let's apply a new material to a few of the keycaps. And then let's look at other keycaps with the same data attached. Give it a give it a red. Now you'll see that that affected only one. But we can link the material. Control L and then M. Okay, now let's look at this on another board. And the same keycaps on this board are changed because of the linked data. They are instances. We can also swap the data on a given object. If we look in the construction collections, we'll see that there's alternate modifier keys. We can swap the, key, the super key for a code key. Or we can take an icon shift and turn it into a text version. Let's change one that we know should change on the other board. For example, the left shift. Switch it over to the text version. Now you'll see that it hasn't changed on the other board. And that's because we've relinked this object data to another set of data. And this one remains the same. While we're here, 
I'd like to add a split backspace to this keyboard. So usually I would put this in a collection and allow you to turn it on and off, but for, for demonstration, let's just delete it. And this is a 2U, so we, we need to fill it with two 1Us that would go in here. So the closest would be these two. So let's uh, Shift D to duplicate, and then X 38.1. So that's 38.1 millimeters on the X direction. So now we have duplicates of these, and they have their own object data. They won't be the same, plus and plus 001. But uh, these are not what we want. We can just relink them. So with the drop down here, I can put a delete key in there. And again, with a backspace. There we go. Uh, one of our users suggested that they need to have a, uh, a row three pipe key in the kit. So this key here need to be over here in, in row three. So in order to do that, let's just grab one of these and duplicate it. Shift D X 19.05 in the minus. And uh, we could just link the data with control LD. However, this would be a different row and that, that wouldn't work. Uh, so what you can do is you select this and then shift select that one last and control T to transfer the UV map. So since these have the same number of vertices between them, the and, and the vertex number is the same, we can actually transfer UV maps between these keys. So there we go. Easy solution for that from, from one row to another. Now, this isn't limited just to keycap models. If we uh, grab a keycap, we can go into the object data and look at the drop down here and we can make it a switch. So should you decide to, to pull keys off and, and show a switch underneath, you can do that. Now let's just select a few more and then grab the switch last and then hit Control L and D and you can make a whole bunch of them into switches. And uh, for this, for these switches on the edge here, actually what I did was um, I duplicated that object first. So uh, let me just give an example here. Uh, if you actually want to have a, a switch underneath the keycap, you can grab that and hit Shift D to duplicate it. So you have the new one and right click so it snaps back into place. You have two there. And, uh, and then you can do the same thing. Make it a switch. So there's a switch underneath there. This is not the best example. Uh, but if I, if I pull it up, you'll be able to see it under there. Uh, that was because of the these edge ones where you can see. Uh, really, it's best to not have geometry that you're not going to see. It's extra calculation when you render. And uh, that's actually also why there's nothing underneath the keycap uh, for light to bounce around in there and cause extra computation and then uh, as a result, extra noise. So um, yeah, that was a tangent. Okay, um, oh, one more good example of this is the USB-C cable. So let's go into accessories and grab our USB cable. And uh, on the one end here, you have USB-C. And on the other end there, uh, USB-A. But you know, you may not, you may not need a USB-A on this end. You could plug it into a USB-C. So if I type in the USB-C boot here, I can switch that over to a USB-C and it'll keep all the behavior that it had before. Just now it's a different model.
different object data attached to the same object. Uh, and there's one thing I'd like to demonstrate, one last thing before the, before we cut this video off. And uh, that's with objects and uh, the modifier stack. And let's make an instance of this so I can demonstrate uh, how one affects the other. Okay, uh, we'll add a bevel and uh, 0.1 millimeters and uh, four segments limited by angle. And since there's some small details in here, we're not really too worried about clashing. I can turn off the clamp over overlap. Uh, and there we go. We've got a nice little micro bevel, a little highlight here if we plan to punch in with a camera. And uh, the other one, well, it doesn't have it on there because uh, uh, modifiers are stored on the object and, and these are separate objects even if the link uh, data is linked. Um, let's bring in let's bring in a board so I can show that it's not really between the same type of object. It could be uh, a, a aluminum board here with sharp edges. You want a little highlight on that corner so let's uh, select one then then where you want to grab it from and control L and uh, modifiers. And uh, this got a little messed up, so um, let's also clean that up um, by turning off clamp overlap because we got some faces going on here, and and we also have um, messed up normal. So let's go for extra points and fix that uh, by adding another modifier, weighted normal, and that weights the normals by face area, etc. Okay, that's looking good. Uh, See you in the next video.